there's all these hoses and these bleaching beds going in, and they just hold you right there. I just, just wanted to know what uh, your effect on this situation is on happens. The great where I live, the water is not the greatest. I've got four wells on my property. Or I got something that would fit that we could even wash up in. And it's something to look at because someday down the road here that the contamination is going to be everybody. It's going to be a big problem. I can see it coming because the quality of stuff the last 60 years that I've been doing it has gone downhill. The water table's dropping and your bad water's getting to the good water. This is what I run across. And about everybody I know has a filter system in the house. And taking care of salt, you're talking 20, 10 to 20,000 dollars to take care of salt. Up there, there's no salt that they know of. But down where I am, on the home bureau, they, you've got salt around there. Cottage pit, the whole, the whole area. But I was just curious, I thought these lots, the way I was understood, it was 100 by 100. That's a little too close. Even 100 foot wide ain't too much for house to be setting in there. But if you can get the 200 foot run, well, there's a better chance of not having a problem down the road. That, that's what I was just kind of curious about. Right by it before you're all find out it's not right. Thank you. Would you mind, sir, not telling us your last name just so we have it for the record? What's that? Would you mind telling us your last name just so that we have it? For Sorry, our... Hillock. Hillock. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll turn the board down. Rick, do you want to? Yeah, um, pick up on that? Sure, I recall a study done by, I thought it was done by Hillock. Uh, it was a different Hillock. And then oh, we, we also right. had the uh, state GIS uh, results of wells in the surrounding area as an exhibit. And uh, we satisfied that requirement for the board at that point. Yeah, I, I did look over that initial report from Hillock. And he did my well, so. And most of the lots are 300 feet deep as some <coughs> referenced 30,000 square feet. That was, that was a good, it was a good point to bring up about the water because there are water concerns in the area, but uh, I did see that report. Um, can you educate me again as to how you're going to mark off that uh, 25, 25 foot buffer around the lot time? Is that, there's no, um, you have no plan as to which lot you're going to develop first, right? It's, it's whatever no. lot sells, right? Exactly, the lots to be put up for sale. So nine, the first one to go, or the last one to go, we don't really know. Correct. So how are you going to mark that off again? So that, that's evident that, that that's a buffer. Sure. This, this lot has, like I said, a little wetland that comes in beyond the property line. So I am looking at the ordinance and okay, 25 foot setback off of that as a no disturb. So as we've pinned the uh, front of the buffers here, I'll pin that setback as a no disturb so that nothing can happen, can happen outside of that okay. line to the north. So you'll put, you know. These, these pins with 3 8 in with a no, no disturb buffer will be placed along that line so that the homeowner of the development here does not encroach on that. Okay. I want to make sure that you put enough pins in there. Yep. I'll get every angle point, probably one, two, three, 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 four, so along that line. Yep. If I might just jump on, on that point, in past applications when this type of um, uh, sort of odd setback, if you will, uh, has come up, the board has, in some instances, looked to have um, uh, even uh, further delineations to demark that setback, whether it be sort of a split rail fence put in, boulders, um, something to augment the pins. Um, so I just sort of put that out, that is sort of a standard condition on, on the notes in the subdivision plans and it is something that sport has considered in the past. Um, so I just sort of offer that for consideration. Okay. So move on. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't other I think I've asked all my questions in the past, so I noticed um, 
information they provided was adequate to answer the questions that I have. That one. So, yeah. Thanks, Rick. Rachel? Yeah, um, I'm the liaison of the board to the uh, Conservation Commission, and after uh, one of the prior meetings when we, we talked about the issues of wells out in, in western Scarborough uh, and the problems with water purity and just simply getting water in some cases, I brought that to the Con Conservation Commission and right now the Commission is looking at what its work plan is going to be for the next couple of years. Uh, and one of the items up for our discussion as to whether that will be on our work plan, we'll be taking a look at the issue of water in, in Scarborough, whether it's the surface water that's uh, coming from heavy developments and enlarging streams and uh, affecting houses downstream, or the lack of water in, in other areas that is going to really impact development. I don't know if that's what we'll be working on. But uh, I've heard what's been said, uh, especially in connection with this development. And while I have no issues with this development itself, I do think it is something that we need to look at in Scarborough and really take into consideration. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I'm generally going to recuse myself from this discussion. I just want clarification on if they're survey pins or what type of pins you're talking about, Mr. Thompson. On the uh, buffers, mm -hmm. they are a 3 8 inch diameter iron rod with a red cap that has the inscription of no disturb buffer. And they left up 6 inches so they are identified. Do you feel that that's sufficient to let the uh, developers know, you know, to, to let the uh, contractors know in the future? But we've used these all over, you know, in Scarborough, many projects and have not had any issues with code coming in and seeing any violations. So they do recognize those pins. Have you seen violations without code recognizing them? I, I have not been on site to see anything, no. I would be in favor of more demarcation, I guess. It's just my thought. Mm -hmm. I'm done. All right. Thank you. Roger? <laughs> the, um, the two issues on this project, as far as I can recall, were the wells, which I think you, know, you satisfied that as far as I'm concerned. And the other, the other uh, issue that's come up from the butters has been the number of lots um, compared to the rest of those properties out there. Would you take a moment and just explain so the public and Mr. Goldberg and others can understand how you arrived at you know, those number of lots? Sure. The, to come up with a conservation subdivision, you have to show that this piece of land will support a conventional uh, lot under the under the overlying excuse me overlying district. So we take take the entire piece and and we've submitted it as an earlier exhibit uh, as a conventional uh, road coming in with a T road perhaps and getting the number of lots that this and as a net residential calculation on this drawing. So then the conservation subdivision allows you to reduce the uh, size but not the density. Uh, so you can get out of 100 feet of frontage and 30,000 square feet of lot area. So we, we took the frontage along Mitchell Hill Road and some of the lots, like I said, are 100, 125, and, and some greater, 250, um, and divided up to um, acceptable, buildable area, area for septic, well, uh, driveway, site distance, took all these things into consideration and resulted in nine lots and then the, the open space in the back, which will be forever open space and wild. Okay. Uh, on the open space, how does how do people get to that? Is that uh, just you know the, the homeowners come around so you can see the lines. Uh, the homeowners, you know, all have obviously they all abut the uh, open space. Uh, it's not necessarily open to the public if there are trails in here and access points. Uh, I don't think the developer and, and uh, is, is going to be any uh, do not enter signs and barbed wire put up. Um, this is for the enjoyment, primarily for the nine lots and for any wildlife and natural uh, uh, occurrences uh, on this piece of land. So it's, it's it's the whole purpose of a conservation subdivision. So I, I think it's a it's a win win for the town. No new roads. We keep the pavement down.
Um, since it seems to be a point of some discussion today, we're on the spot about the, uh, the, demar the form of demarcation of the new disturb buffer line. It's been suggested that the board consider something beyond just the, the pins. No, I can't get you on the spot or no. Can you? No. Whatever Jay says is now. <laughs> no. The question is, I think, is are you in favor of, do you think the red pins are adequate or should there uh, be additional demarcation such as, again, I think I think it's just standard. And if it's used, I don't have a problem. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't address that in my comments. I would be in favor of additional uh, markings, whether it's a split rail fence or uh, boulders or, or something, but something a little uh, clearer than than simply the the red caps. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Susan? I'm somebody who feels as if additional um, um, delineation is important. We've been doing these um, conservation subdivisions for quite some time. And it all works very well as long as the initial owners stay on that land. Because when they purchased that land and had their houses built, they knew exactly what those delineations were. But somehow or another, when it starts changing hands and all you have is a little post out there with a red cap on the top, and maybe they didn't even get told when they purchased the house after all. You know, you can't do anything beyond that point. So split rail fence or boulders, or there's a, any number of things that have been done by developments in Scarborough, I think it's very important. You're not supposed to go out there and dig in the wetlands. You're not supposed to go out there and plant things in the wetlands. You're not supposed to go out there and take limbs off trees in those wetlands. But they're supposed to be non-disturbed, you know, literally non-disturbed. So I would like to see the applicant come back with something that, you know, they don't have to provide it. The developer doesn't have to provide it, but the owner has to know that when they purchase this lot and start to develop it, they're going to have to put in a fence. And it should be the same for everybody because of the fact that these are all in line with each other. So I think that the um, delineation should be the same, just visually speaking. Um, that's one of my problems with this, by the way, is it, it just is so boring. But anyway, that is not against the ordinance. Boring is not written into our ordinances. Um, this whole idea of um, public access, I don't know this, this property. We didn't do any kind of a sidewalk on this. I don't know what this property looks like. I don't know if there's anywhere around it where there can be public access created. I mean, you're going to parking on Mitchell Hill Road and try and find a way through all those houses to get to the wetland is going to work. But I just would like to, before we do anything permanent <clears throat> in granting approval, I'd like to know whether it's possible. If you have some comment to me right now, that's fine. Sure, I, as I mentioned a little while ago, you know, there, there is an area of, uh, along the brook here uh, to come into the property, but I think, you know, the conservation subdivision doesn't require it that's to correct. be open to the public. That's correct. Um, we have nine homeowners, um, and, and again, the, the, the frontage along the uh, Mitchell Hill Road here, and as I indicated, I don't think, you know, as long as somebody was uh, respectful to the property, um, if I lived there, I don't think I'd be opposed to if somebody went out uh, cross-country skiing or, or enjoying the land. Okay, I um, think that somehow that needs to be in uh, in the actual, it needs to be written down. It needs to be said that the public can use this property as long as they don't do A, B, C, and D. I don't think it's necessary to provide parking. Uh, the, I, I should know the answer to this, so I apologize. Um, the Homeowners Association, there'll be one? That's correct, yes. And they will own this open space? That's correct. Okay. Manage it, manage it, and own it. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. So somehow when the paperwork is drawn up, I think it needs to be very clear that it is open not just to the homeowners. 
And, you know, hopefully, no one's going to want to use it who doesn't have a safe place to leave, leave their car. But neighbors, people around, especially if they're already using it for some sort of um, um, recreation, I would like them to feel as if they're welcome to do that. And we, our, our latest revision or amendment that was submitted to Jay on the open space talked about, excuse me, the Homeowners Association talked about open space. So we can take it if we need to, to tweak that a little bit to, to recognize what your concerns okay. are. As far as, Mr. Chair, if I could mention on the uh, additional uh, demarcation, um, you know, fences are great when they first go up and then they, uh, I've got one on my property and it, it, it gets old and fallen down. We'd really rather look at uh, boulders if we could. Boulders are fine. Yeah, along, along that line and, and, and make it mm -hmm. make it consistent. And I have no problem that, with that. that this, if I'm yeah. on my way to trim a tree and I fall over a boulder, I might say, you know, why is that boulder? It's just more fence? natural than, yeah. than, than a wooden fence. So we, That's we, fine we, with me. We'd be agreeable yeah. for that. I don't have any problems with that. Thank you. Basically, I think I'm ready to say this is okay. I would like to just request that the Conservation Commission hurry up. <laughs> and make establishing <laughs> and make establishing um, you know what's happening with our water. We've had a bunch of questions come up as a result of this development. Things I didn't know were problems. So I want to thank the public for coming in and bringing our attention to this because, well, <laughs> I'm just saying thank you for coming and telling us again that this is a uh, a problematic area and that we need to look at it very carefully. So I'm just asking the Conservation Commission to, to um, you know, as much as possible, and this might be a good opportunity to use this development to say this is the kind of thing we're looking looking at in town right now. Other than that, I don't have any other things, any other questions. Thanks, Susan. And uh, just picking up on that before I lose my train of thought, I think it, and you've made similar comments in the past, Susan, that you know we are in the midst of updating the comprehensive plan for the town, and that includes, you know, it's it's not just how is Scarborough going to grow? It's also it also takes into account our natural resources and things like water and, and other forms of natural resources and infrastructure. So I think that's something that and the conservation uh, commission has been uh, in that loop as well, and others have been. So I think that's something we can incorporate into that. We appreciate that feedback. Um, also, uh, just picking up on the discussion on the. the Demarcation um, agreement proposed uh, uh, an, an additional condition to the draft motion that we have here for our consideration that would uh, sort of lead it to the discretion of the of staff working with the applicant to determine what makes the most sense. So we, we don't want to prescribe any specific fencing or anything like that. And this has been discussed, it, it is something that's been done in a lot of these projects in the past. Um, I appreciate Roger asking the question about um, the, you know, how conservation subdivision, how that works, and I think we, we've seen these a lot, but um, I think it's good to remind ourselves and the public sometimes sort of how we get to these layouts at times. And sometimes it might seem counterintuitive, particularly when you're in an area that where you haven't seen smaller lots maybe, um, or a lot of development, but this is something that is absolutely uh, permitted under the the ordinance and it has some benefits to it. Um, beyond that, I, I think we've covered everything. I appreciate the walkthrough of, on, the, uh, on the staff comments. And um, with that, unless there are any further questions or, or discussion from the board, I will uh, put a motion forward. Uh, I move to approve the project titled Mitchell Hill Estates, proposed by Five Star Holdings LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by BH2M dated April 6, 2018 with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated. Conditions number one, prior to the signing and release of the Mylar, the plan shall be revised to address the following. A. Revisions to Plan Note 35 as stated in the staff comments memo dated April 23, 2018. B. A plan note that identifies the proposed widths of the node disturbed stormwater buffer for lot 6. And condition 1C, this is the new one, demonstrate additional demarcation for the 25 foot side yard setback on lot 9, as well as the no disturbed buffer along the rear of lots 1 to 9. Uh, we did that one on the fly, so. 
I don't know if there are any questions about that. Number two, prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry, Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the traffic impact fees of $5,485.19, B, provide a written deed restriction for the no disturbed stormwater buffers for each lot, C, revise the homeowners association agreement to include language that indicates that the open space will be managed by the homeowners association, and condition number three, the recreation contribution in the amount of $250 shall be paid on a lot by lot basis prior to the issuance of a building permit. Second. I have a second. And just as a housekeeping note, Robin, are you I'm recusing, you, recusing yourself, so we're going to vote on this. Any? Can, can I just ask a clarifying question? Because it'll be coming in front of us staff um, with building permits. Um, and the placement of those boulders in the, along the back of one through nine, is that the limit of disturbance, or are they going to be trying to place boulders in places beyond where the clearing limits are designated? Good question. Well, I believe the purpose for the boulders are to reinforce the um, uh, identification of those buffer pins mm -hmm. on the buildable side of the lot. But like a pin, you can go into the woods and put a pin and say that's as far as you've cleared. I was wondering if initially are all of those lots going to be disturbed all the way up to all those pins, and then it's easy. <laughs> but it's not, I guess that was... Yeah, I, I'm not sure what will happen, <laughs> time, but I think that the density, there's a lot of field on some of those um, uh, lots already. I think it'll be easy enough to, to get okay. to get that done. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Staff report. Uh, sure, just update the board on a, a couple of different items. Um, one, we've already talked about a little bit of the comprehensive plan. Um, the very the first couple of draft chapters are starting to trickle in. The uh, the Long Range Planning Committee has reviewed two so far. We'll be reviewing two more. This is sort of our very early stages of review as things get packaged together for full public consumption. But those chapters are. On the website, if anyone's interested, but um, just let folks know that that. things are percolating, so that's exciting. Um, let's see. Also, want to make mention um, the uh, Downs property. Um, it's actually they're going to be having a discussion with our transportation committee tomorrow night. Um, really start to understand some of the, the overall impacts um, of the full build out. I know this for sort of we worked. We've zoomed, we started zoomed out, we've started to zoom into uh, certain phases, but I just want to let you all know that you know, there's still sort of the bigger impacts being considered and thought about, um, and those will also be considered and thought about here. But just to give you an update as to what's going on there. Um, so I think that's about all I had. I don't know. Jamel, do you have anything you want to? Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that public safety building, um, that project's moving and we're having an informational meeting on Wednesday at 6 p.m. I know it's, an easy, it's a busy night, but um, it's going to be at the Oak Hill, the existing um, facility here at Oak Hill. And um, the planning board will be seeing it as an advisory. Um, uh, when we get the architecture pieces and the details, they'll be in front of the board to, for you guys to take a look at. 6 p.m. where? At the um, existing fire and police station at Oak Hill. Jane, quick question. Can you remind us what the website is for the for the plan of Palooza? Yep, so scarboroughengage.org. Scarborough um, and so far, just for reference, the draft chapters are actually being posted with the agenda of the Long Range Planning Committee, which is on the town's website. Um, but we'll also be updating those. I think the first two might already be on Scarborough Engage. I think we, the other two, after the committee looks at it, we'll get them up there as well. So, Thank you. Thank you. That's for staff. Uh, administrative amendment report. Uh, did have, uh, you did have one today. Just today. Hey, touch. Yes. Yes. So, so I believe that was an amendment.
administrative approval for a small storage shed, equipment shed, uh, at being top uh, uh, Pedro. Certainly didn't see the rest of the level of something we need to start on our Thank you. Any planning board correspondence? I will just let you know we have continued to receive lots of uh, good emails from folks regarding the uh, Verizon Tower, so we are compiling those and be sharing those with you when that comes back before this board. Um, you know, that's dependent on when they resubmit. So, um, so, so seg segueing to planning board comments, and I don't know if this is what you're about to ask about, Roger, but um, yes, it is. the the uh, the they were unable to do a balloon float, but they did raise a crane up. Um, can you just briefly remind us sort of what happens from there in terms of how they do the visual impact analysis? And sure, sure. So, um, so essentially what they did is they raised that, as you just mentioned, sort of a man structure crane up to 100 feet. And then what they do is drive around the town from all the public roads and public spaces and take photos uh, so that they can then, as part of a visual impact analysis, put together the, the photos that they take in and they sort of show you where they were from and, and what you see from particular angles. And then they, there's one picture that will show the tower and then presumably another, I'm sorry, that will show the crane. Then another picture that would sort of photo simulate what a tower might look like. Um, and then in past applications and presumably in this application, the photo uh, simulate what a, what a model pack might look like. So the board can get a sense of, um, of what it would look like from various locations. Thank you. Roger. I guess um, what I was asking, I asked your mom about this um, in an email a while ago for uh, the old way district, transportation way district, and he sent me the whole map. <laughs> and I remember when we were discussing the AT&T facility at the exposure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 